Honorable Member from Drumheller Stetler. Yes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Congratulations on your election. Uh, it is with great pride and excitement that I rise today in response to the speech from the throne by Her Honour the Lieutenant Governor and give my maiden speech in this House. This is truly a humbling House. For a newcomer, it feels as if the weight and expectation of Alberta looms over it. It's a strange feeling. It makes you feel incredibly small, but part of something so very big. I'd like to thank the constituents of Drumheller Stetler for allowing me the privilege and honour to be the representative in this Alberta's 30th legislature. I'd like to thank them for taking a chance on an unlikely candidate, one without political experience. I love where I live, Madam Speaker, and I would not care to live anywhere else. It's big and open and can be harsh and unforgiving, but is full of communities that act like families, that work and play together and rely on each other. So I intend to repay the people of Drumheller Stetler for their trust by working hard and working with them. We're all in this together. I'd also like to thank my family and especially my wife Jennifer for allowing me this opportunity. It's a big ask when you have a young family and you're four hours from Edmonton. I promise to spend the rest of my days paying it back and to explain to our kids why I felt it was so important. Madam Speaker, it's been mentioned many times what a rare opportunity this is to be a representative in this assembly. That fact is not lost on me. My area, going back to when the riding was simply called Chinook, has had only four representatives since 1975. In preparation for this speech, I read the maiden speeches of those who came before me. Many or most of the struggles of today were the struggles of yesterday too. Isolation, declining or stagnant population, need for economic development, accessibility of health care, per pupil education funding, centralization of services, and of course the need and desire for more water. My predecessors accomplished a great deal and did the best in their time. I hope to take up the torch and convey to you all how much untapped potential still exists in the big country, potential that can benefit all of Alberta. The riding of Drumheller Stetler is big. If it were a country, it would rank 133rd out of 196 in size. To give that some context, Madam Speaker, that's slightly smaller than the Netherlands or Switzerland and a little bigger than Taiwan or Belgium. And unlike our large northern ridings, Drumheller Stetler has roads, people, and communities in every corner. Maybe not many in every corner, but you catch my drift. This riding is municipally composed of three counties, two municipal districts, and the special areas. All told, it is over 8.7 million acres and has over 16,000 kilometers of open maintained roads. Once more for context, that's over twice the distance of the main route of the Trans-Canada Highway. The riding has 25 urban municipalities, almost a tenth of Alberta's total, including seven towns, 16 villages, and two summer villages. I'd like to say, Madam Speaker, that before I entered this nomination, the nomination race roughly 15 months ago, I thought I knew a fair amount of people from all over the riding. You know, you grow up in an area, you do business there. I, I felt I'd made a lot of good connections and relationships over the course of my life. It is an extremely sobering and awesome experience to get in the truck, drive three hours from home, and start introducing yourself, start telling your story, and begin to learn the complexities and struggles and strengths of different regions and their people. You soon realize how small your circle was. That, Madam Speaker, has been the most rewarding part of this adventure so far. As with most things in life, it's been about the journey. I was confident that I could do this job, that I could learn and grow into the role. I know these roles require hard work, depth and dedication, you do not have to be a lawyer to be a great member of this assembly and to steal a line from the MLA for the outstanding constituency of Olds Didsbury Three Hills. I believe we have 11 lawyers on this side. That ought to be enough. <laughs> My point is I believe much of this role can be learned through, exper through experiencing it. I'm reminded of the 4-H motto, learn to do by doing. So far, I think that is the case. We're learning the procedures, the standing orders, the protocol. For myself, even things as simple as dressing appropriately. I'm having a bit of a hard time with this one, but when our whip spoke of the dress code, I could see the concern in his eyes. 
I think he was picturing me sitting beside him looking like Woody off Toy Story. <laughs> so for the honorable member for Calgary West, who when he's here is usually the best dressed fella in here, I am trying. Uh, back to my point, Madam Speaker, the journey. What I know will help me succeed in this job that I couldn't have learned here in Edmonton, even with all this support, staff and assistance, is what the riding of Drumheller Stetler needs. What is working well, what is critical, and what is long overdue. The relationships with the many councils and boards and the late night phone calls with the concerned folks we've met along the way. So if you'll indulge me, I'd like to share a little of what I've learned. We may as well start with the town of Drumheller. You don't find many towns like Drumheller. For one, it's roughly two kilometers wide by 28 kilometers long. The town itself includes the communities of Knackmine, Newcastle, Rosedale, Wayne, and East Cooley. It was formerly a district of some kind, and years ago all became the town of Drumheller. Drumheller itself is one of Alberta's major tourist destinations and the gateway to the Badlands. Drumheller receives over half a million summer visitors in no small part due to the Trail Museum. The museum is world renowned and a cornerstone of Alberta's tourism infrastructure. It does pose some issues for the town and residents. Slow falls and dead winters with absolutely full summers create some unique business and town infrastructure challenges. Namely, the town needs oversized common areas and the local taxpayers feel hard done by. The town's most real concern has always been about flood mitigation. The entire area is on a floodplain, and this is the most pressing concern to town leaders. Starland County borders Drumheller. It's known for good farmland, has the villages of Delia, Morin, and Munson, and the well-known hamlet of Rowley, a backdrop for many a movie. Starland's biggest concern currently is oil and gas companies closing their doors. Trident ceasing operations not long ago has hit the county with a 60% shortfall to their industrial tax base. That coupled with the loss of local jobs and a great many unpaid invoices to local mom and pop type service companies, this area has been hit hard. This county is responsible for 122 bridges and with this hit they've begun to close roads because currently the cost of bridge, bridge maintenance or heaven forbid replacement is far out of reach. North of Starland you'll find the county of Stetler. This area is known for great farmland, great cattle country and oil and gas. The town of Stetler punches above its weight as an oil field manufacturing centre. It employs a lot of fabricators and sends products and packages all over North America and beyond. The Trident closure and others have hurt Stetler County as well. They are currently excited for a proposed grain loop terminal planned by G3 to be built south of Erskine. East of here we run into the county of Payne Earth, known for towns like Castor Coronation and the village of Halkirk. This is home for one of the two coal fire power plants in the riding. The uncertainty of coal's future and the future of our electrical grid in general has caused a great deal of stress and hardship in this riding. Proposed wind projects have pitted neighbour against neighbour. Mun municipalities need the development, but the unregulated way the land agents acquire an area leaves the locals to fight with their councils in an effort to find a resolution. East and north, we enter the MD of Provost, and I have to admit this is the area I had the least amount of prior connection with, but it has been a great experience to get to know the people in this area. It's known for villages along Highway 13, including Amos, Qendon, and Czar and the town of Provost itself. Provost is an oil town and is fiercely proud of being a complete town. They still deliver babies and have a funeral home. From start to finish, they have all the services one could require. They employ a great many from the Saskatchewan side and could teach a lesson to other areas in not only acquiring doctors, but retaining them. They go out of their way to make them part of their community. Drumheller and Stetler have been hit hard by rural crime, but no area in my riding has been hit worse than here. Many businesses multiple times, some are giving up. In the southeast corner is the MD of Acadia, known for its good soil. Farmers in this area are known to succeed without much rain. There are some big progressive farmers in this area that are moving up the chain, looking to find global partners for upgraded agri-food products. There's a proposed irrigation project in the assessment phase here that looks very promising and feasible. Irrigation potential on soil of this quality would be incredibly productive to the area and the province. That leaves in the middle the special areas, all 5.1 million acres of it. Known for towns like Hannah and Oyen, villages like Concert, Empress and Veteran, home of the Sheerness power plant, 
This area is known for hard grass and good cattle. It's notoriously dry. Its hybrid governance model dates back to 1938, when for a train car to put your belongings in and a little food and traveling cash, settlers turned in their deeds to get the heck out. It's where I'm from and I'm biased, but it's full of great hardy people. This area cra always craved more water and has much more irrigation potential as well. I'm lucky to be an irrigator in this area and know what it can do to stabilize and better an operation and region. Oil and gas has played a large role in building the area, but it's having a hard time currently like most places. Companies are reclaiming entire fields, putting to bed many good wells with the bad in response to low gas prices and a broken liability formula used by the regulator. The future of the Shearness Power Plant and Westmoreland Coal Mine causes much concern for Hanna and area. Interestingly, the plant actually just sold to an American company on Monday. The town has been impacted greatly. Houses can't be sold and empty Main Street and hurting businesses. The facilitator for Communities Against Abuse mentioned the other day that the reports of sexual violence and abuse in this area has seen a six-fold increase in reported cases in the last two years. The human impact of these events on this area is staggering. I know the demographics of Alberta have changed a lot and will continue to. I know that our cities will deal with the issues associated with rapid growth and ridings like mine will deal with the issues associated with clinging to the services we have, the services we need. I know the cities have the votes, the representatives, the power, but more voices or not, myself and my country colleagues will be here to remind this house that decisions made here ripple out into every corner of the province and have real consequence. I come from kind of a political family, Madam Speaker. Mr. Diefenbaker made my great-grandfather a senator, and since there have been quite a few served federally and here in Alberta. I should have known enough to stay away, but there is obviously a strong hereditary defect. <laughs> I like to think it's because we care about people. I think this can be a noble role, Madam Speaker. Help people, try hard, and leave it better than you found it. I threw my hat in the ring because I was worried about my kids' future, my region's future, and Alberta's future. The speech from the throne, much like this platform, and this caucus I'm so proud to be a part of, is a breath of fresh air, and has finally given regions like mine some optimism and hope. I'm proud to be here with you all in this house today, and pledge to be a hard-working, loyal, thoughtful member and to my constituents, I pledge to do what I said I would and tell your story the best I can. Thank you, Madam Speaker.